everyone, and welcome on back to Building with Whip. Today, we're starting out in the ocean here, in front of our awesome coral reef that we've been building up over the last little while. I know it's been a little while since we've done things in this series. It's because I was actually out on vacation, for those of you guys that didn't know. I was out of town for a week over in Hawaii, doing a bunch of snorkeling, hanging on the beach, and all that fun stuff. And I had a freaking awesome time, but I'm so ready to be back and playing some Minecraft, getting all this stuff going and getting into the groove of everything besides going to work. That one I could I could go without on. But anyways, last few episodes we spent building up this awesome reef, including a fully functional survival base cave down here for this guy. We got a food source on this side. We got a little bit of a cactus farm on this right in there for I don't know why. We got a smeltery area up there so you can get all that stuff going. Storage room, bed, enchanting room, and nether portal linking up to our hub back there in the corner. But anyways, today we need to start moving forward with some other things. It's time that we started getting a little bit more stuff going on here. We don't really need those guys on us. But anyways, what I want to start with on today's episode is you guys, I asked you guys two episodes back what we should do to help build up a awesome statue for a conduit. So this episode, we're gonna be tackling that. I've come up with a really cool idea uh, based on something that was left by M13. Uh, they mentioned in the comments that they wanna see some sort of a seahorse or something like that going, like creating into the conduit statue. So I was thinking that we could have the belly of the seahorse actually be the conduit, then it goes up a little bit, and then it kind of curls down a little bit, kind of like that, and does the tail swoopy a little bit. I did like a really rough, rough, rough little outline of just kind of the general shape. So we're going to be building off of that guy. We're going to leave the center as this cool prismarine brick stuff, not the dark prismarine. And then beyond that, we are going to go ahead and use that awesome colored prismarine down there so that it kind of changes color as it goes, which means that we get to head on down into this leg fest right here and see how much prismarine we actually have on ready to go so we can craft up a bunch of the stuff and use it as we're going here. But anyways... We just got to get a lot of the stuff down in here. And I think we did fill up this whole thing because we were worried about the whole thing breaking on us. So we can come down here and, ooh, it's almost full. Almost full. Okay, we'll just fill up our inventory as much as we can with that stuff. Okay, guardians are still falling. We are good to go. And we just want to be able to build it into prismarine right here. Not the brick, so we can actually get a good amount out of this because it's only four per stack, which I totally did not think of. But that's really awesome. Let me go ahead and get a few more stacks of this stuff here gathered up, guys, and I'll be back with you, and we can start planning out how we're going to be doing this whole building thingy again. i got to figure out how to build again, so this will be fun. All right, guys, we got everything in hand. Hopefully, this will be enough to finish the whole project. Man, I just can't stop looking back at this place. It's so freaking cool. I love this. But yeah, we're going to be taking a step over here by a nice little fishy swimming by, and we're going to be working on this guy right here. I'm not really too sure about what the end goal is gonna be looking like. But all I know is I wanna have the dolphin facing out that way. So once we eventually get around to it, we got the conduit on each side and I wanna eventually have conduits on every single side facing out. So to get started here, I think we wanna go ahead and do something a little bit like this. As I mentioned before, I've done a little bit of work with this already, just trying to mess with it here. You have the belly of the seahorse right here kind of bulging out, which is gonna be the front of our conduit. And then it kind of comes back and then the neck's going to go back down around that way. But we also got the underside here, which is going to have that little bit of a tail bit to it. So we want to go ahead and be able to bring these guys down here. And for this one, we want to have this kind of a little bit of a sharper curve right here. So I was thinking we probably want to go ahead and kind of have that step down right here and then step over. And then we can go ahead and do a little bam action like that. And then bring in this guy out here like this. This is the part that I've more figured out how I want to shape out the bottom. But you can see that kind of we're bringing it in, then bringing it right back out, stepping it up into a stair right there. And then we're going to be stepping it up into another stair right up here. And then this comes right up into the top of this guy. And we got that right there. And then this is where things get a little interesting. So I want to go ahead and make it look like this tail's like really curving down right like that. I think we can almost achieve that by doing this double upside down stair a little bit right there. You can kind of see that general curve right here. Also, I should probably mention it now. We're going to have a platform with stone and stone brick right down here, just kind of filling in this area. So we can go ahead and kind of fill this stuff in right now. Ooh, we're trying out the trident. Ooh, we got to get him. Oh, oh. All right, we got to see what's the melee damage like on this thing. 
Oh, that's so much stronger. Wow. Okay. But yeah, so we got this weird little, like, it looks okay from the inside, but the outside of it does not look so great. So I was thinking, if we came up here and just smooth this tail bit out a little bit just to thicken it up with, like, these nice little bits of, uh, whatchamacallit here. What are these? Slabs. Slabs are the right word for that. And then coming down here, we also want to go ahead and kind of smooth that bit out right there. I think that gives a nice little archy curve to the tail right there. I think that'll really help us out with what we want to be doing here. Okay, now that we got the tail done though, guys, let's go ahead and tackle this top part up here and see if we can't figure out something to do. I was thinking, because we want to have this top be pretty thick so we can squeeze a head into here. So what if we came around like this and then brought it back down? and then kind of had that be the top loop. So we have that head kind of dotted down this way. And then at this point here, we probably want to be able to do something that kind of comes out in this general shape right here, and then bringing it back up like this all the way to the top. But I think right there, that does not look too great. But you guys can see the general idea that I got going on with this one. I think we just got to iron this out a little bit more. So right here, we got this nice little stair bit, then that comes down pretty harsh. What if we came in here and to make our little mouth right here, I've kind of used this trick before in a few different organics that I've done, is we go ahead and kind of do just something right like this. It is a statue after all, so we don't need that whole big massive mouth on it. Like we can just have it be a statue. Statues don't have to have mouths or anything on them. So I think we're totally fine on this guy. And this up here is way, way too close to the surface. So we don't want to do that. You can see that general little shape right there that we're working with as far as everything going right here. Now, what if on this guy, we came through here and kind of smooth that little bit out right there. I think that could actually really help us out. And then you, we go ahead and give it a little bit of a bump. So like the eyes would be looking right in that little spot right there. So you can kind of peer like looking like right there. So they'd be able to see over the top of their nose. They'd be able to see out there. I think that'll give it a nice little bit of a look to it. So you can see that guy really starting to slope up here and it's looking pretty freaking awesome so far. As always, we got extra little bits that we want to be doing here. This guy right here kind of lines up. This will be near where the top of the head is. So we probably want to go ahead and do a little bit of action like this guy maybe. What if, what's that do? That puts it right there. And then if you guys have ever, if you go and look up pictures of seahorses, they kind of have like those, what kind of dragons have down in the back of there. Uh, backs in like the fantasy world where they have like the spikes going all the way back. Seahorses kind of have like a nice watery version of that. At least the picture of the seahorses I was looking at. So we want to go ahead and try and recreate that as much as we possibly can up here. And I think it'd be a good way of doing it is using stairs kind of like this as we can inch them down the sides of their bodies and things like that. And stairs actually allow us to do a nice little trick when we're coming down that we can do something like that. We're gonna make this guy pretty skinny. I think at most we're gonna have it being three wide is my plan right now. But if we wanna strengthen it out a little bit more, you guys can see that general shape of the head right there that we got going in. And then we got the general shape of the tail right here too. And I think that's looking pretty awesome so far. Okay, next thing we wanna be focused on here is cause we have this kind of weird looking, I wanna rework that corner, but I think that's a little bit too harsh on us right there. But what I wanna focus on is if you look at seahorses, they have these awesome little back, like major fin back there. I don't know what it'd be called. I know it's a dorsal fin on fish, but I don't think that's quite the same thing that they're called here for seahorses. But you know, I could be wrong. It could be a dorsal fin too. But I was thinking if we brought this guy all the way out here and we did some cool stuff with and just kind of brought, uh, what do we want to do here? So something like this. And then actually we probably, that's probably a little too far out there, huh? What if we go ahead and try for now? We can always we can always extend it out if we need to. There's no there's no problem there. We can always just bump it right back out if we need to right there. But I think with bringing that out just two more than where it was previously, I think that's probably a pretty good way we can do this one. Then if we do that right there, so you can see that general shape of the fin really coming in there together. And I think that'll actually really help us out with kind of figuring out the general shape of this guy. But you can see right here that we can go ahead and bring these bits down like that. And that's looking pretty good. Then the bottom of this guy, what if for now we just kind of go ahead and do that to help bring that shape back in. And then we can kind of start bringing all these little bits there together. But that we can touch here in a sec. First, I want to go ahead and tackle this top guy up here to see what else we can change on it. Like maybe, what if we came right here and did something like you and bam, like that, that, uh, maybe. What if we went ahead and made that a slab instead of a full block? Just to kind of smooth this whole guy out here. 
Okay, so we got rid of the snare right there and I'm thinking we probably wanna go ahead and come in with like another slab right here. And if we do like another little block right like that, I think that can actually help even us out here. And then we're coming to this problem right here where it's looking a little weird. Cause so we wanna have that line coming right across here. And then say we go ahead and get rid of you, throw that in there. And how's that do for that shape? That's kind of getting that shape I want, but it's almost still a little too much of like a blocky gap going up there. But I think that's something that we can work with. Maybe through adding that extra layer right here for the depth, that's something that could actually work out pretty well for us. Okay, now we can go ahead and focus on the bottom bit right down here. We got all this cool stuff going on, and if we go ahead and do that right there and kind of extend that out. So right here we have that little bit of a gap, but then it comes in and steps down. We can make a sharper angle right here and make it look like it's starting to turn into the tail by using that little half slab right there. And then I think that brings us to the bottom. That does. Look at that, guys. We actually have a seahorse shape going on. I think you guys will have to let me know. Is this looking like a seahorse or not? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Does this look anything like a seahorse right now in our, in our 2D seahorse we got going on here surrounding the conduit? But what we can go ahead and do now, I was thinking that we probably want to go ahead and bring all of our stone out like this. And I think that brings us out to, what is that guy right there? We probably want to extend it by like three on each side just to give it a little, little bit of room to breathe. And so we can create a cool platform outside of this guy. So we brought this all around right here. That could probably work out pretty well. And then that works out great right there. And then I was thinking on top of this, we go ahead and grab some stone brick and kind of again, border this right here. And the stone brick will be what's going all the way down to the ground. And we fill in the center with some stone. And I think that'd be pretty good. So guys, let me go ahead and get this little scaffolding in place right here for the stone brick and I'll be back with you. All right, welcome back guys. So I went ahead and filled in all the stone down here. It's looking pretty nice. I did go ahead and iron out a few things along the back here, trying to get our shape in here a little bit more intact. It's mostly the same. I shrunk down the big fin that we had here instead of being that extra block in the middle, I kind of shortened it up. So I dropped all that guy down. And then we made some more space up into here to smooth that one out. And I think it was a really good call. What I'd like to focus on with you guys now is actually going ahead and kind of filling in all this area. You guys can see I kind of started here with how I kind of want the general shape of it to go when it's coming out to the edge there. I don't want this to seem like a whole big thing. So I really want it to kind of just be like a really, really skinny statue. The main layer where everything is gonna be on is gonna be that middle block right there. So we're basically making an outline of our whole thing here, but we're actually just kind of going ahead and letting it roll as its, as its own thing, I guess you would say. I guess, <laughs> I don't really know. At this point, I just kind of wanted to go ahead and kind of jump up and do a little bit of stuff. So you can kind of see right here, go underground and come back up. So it'd go into that thing and I don't really want to change that away from stone. We could change that to prismarine. I don't know, let me know. Should we change that to prismarine? You guys will have to let me know down in the comments. But yeah, so that's kind of the general base for the bottom here that I was thinking of. You can see we still have this full view of the conduit and I really, really like that. I really like having the full view of what's going on inside of our conduit here. So you can see that we can go ahead and bring that over here to this side really, really easily. And for some reason, facing this way, legs, I crafted. You know what? I probably got close enough to the guardian farm where it started spawning things. That's probably what happened. But yeah, so we can go ahead and do that guy right there. Or no, you went up one more, didn't you? Didn't you there, buddy? Did you? Did you? You did hope. Look at me, I'm so good at this. <laughs> but yeah, so we can go ahead and bring you down and then that goes straight into a stair. Then this guy basically comes down to be even with that guy. Then we're, we did a little bit of a slab and then we bring that whole line up there straight up to the top and then bam and bam and then a little bam action right there and that's looking pretty freaking snazzy. And then in order to connect this up, we do a little slab right there and we, I did a little one right in there just to add a little bit of extra detail to it. But I don't think that's looking too boxy and I think it does from the front, I'm hoping I'm hoping it doesn't just look like one tall line of stuff right here. That's kind of my goal. It'll have some depth to it. It'll have some variation to it. And I think that's something that we are able to achieve here pretty easily. All right, guys. So moving on to the top part, this is where it's going to get a little bit more interesting. I kind of wanted to go ahead and almost bring this up to here and then bring it out, kind of go into there. I feel like that's a good way of doing it, but we probably want to go ahead and smooth this out a little bit more so we can just fit a little bit more detail into here with our slabs and our stairs and all that good stuff. So we can go ahead and do something like that. I think that'll actually really help it out there. Then in here, of course, we can go ahead and bring that down, still leaving that central area for the conduit opened up and everything like that. And I think that'll actually really help out. But if we come up to here, 
to kind of help even with that slope. We don't want to full block. We want to go ahead and do a little bit of a slab action. And then what if we came up to the top and kind of did something like this and bring these guys all the way down. And we probably just want to go ahead and do like a straight ish line right there. Probably drop that top one down a little bit. Just get a little bit more detail into it. But yeah, what what are we thinking here? What if we go ahead and drop you down like two blocks and do a little bit of a stair right there? And what if right up here we came in with a stair? Just to, again, even all this stuff out. That looks like it's too far forward. So what if instead we came over here, did a stair on this guy, and then here we go ahead and drop you down, do a stair action. Nah, no, that's still not working for me. That's not doing what I want it to do. What if we did like you and then bring this up and do an action like that? But then that's a, such a straight line right there. I don't know, guys. Let me think about this one real fast. All right, genius idea. What if we took the ideas that we're going with over here and brought it into this inner area? So we kind of build up to these different areas right there. They're kind of looking like, ooh, that's a little too perfect for me. It's a little too perfect. Now, what if we came through here and instead of doing one of them, or instead of doing two of them, we drop you down and just do one big guy right there. That, that works a little bit better. I like that one a lot more, but I'm thinking we probably want to almost go ahead and turn you up into that big guy and maybe move this back like that and you. Okay, yeah, I like that. That looks much better. I'm sure you guys can't see a whole lot of detail in this because it's the prismarine and it's one continuous texture, but it, I, I, I promise you, it's looking a heck of a lot better now. <laughs> so just think about that. Now that we've done prismarine literally everywhere on it, it's probably not too easy to see the depth and everything of that. But oh well. So guys, let me go ahead and finish up with creating the other side of this guy for the top half right here. And I will be back with you guys once we're all wrapped up. Well guys, I gotta say, it's actually looking really, really cool out here now. I'm really happy with the end result we have so far with it. And I think the dolphins and all the fishies really like it too. But we still gotta add a few more things here. I wanna show you guys a few changes I made. To round out the stomach a little bit more, I went ahead and put these stairs on it. I think that looks okay with hiding the conduit a little bit so it's more just visible from the sides. I think that's okay for what we're going with here. This side is totally duplicated up and everything's cleaned up there, ready to go. Hey, Mr. Drowned. And while we're working on killing this drowned right here, we do have a few other things that I wanna start adding into this area. Mostly, ooh, ooh, no, dolphin, give me my gold. You give me that gold bar. Do we get it? Ah, we got it, perfect. But anyways, I got some bone wheel on us and I got some kelp. Now I thought it'd be kind of nice to help sell this as like an underwater sunken ruin of sorts. I'm kind of thinking those Naga vibes I was talking about in the last few episodes from like the eye of um, the Cataclysm Zone in World of Warcraft uh, Vashir, uh, where you have a lot of like just overgrown things growing up all over the place. And I think we can really sell that here. I don't really want that many kelp things. And I, I want to make this look super, super overgrown and kind of just life all over the place. And I think we can really go ahead and nail that down here, which is kind of placing in a few things like this and allowing them to grow up like crazy. So even like we could have one like right here. Perfect. That kind of grow up right there and kind of help add to that little bit of a look that we got going on here. And then of course, coming back in with some seagrass and it won't grow in there luckily. So that's pretty good. Actually, can it? Oh, you totally can grow it inside of a conduit. Oh, that's perfect. And do we, are we losing our buff? Are we losing our buff? We are not. Okay, so you can grow seagrass inside of a conduit. That's actually great news. Okay, perfect. So I wanna go ahead and add a few little seagrass things all over the place in here. Just kind of making it look more like there's some extra greenery and stuff growing on top of this guy. But I think that's looking pretty good for today's episode. It'll be kind of doing its color changing thing all over the place, which I think is gonna be really, really awesome as we're looking at it from a distance. But anyways, guys, before we end this one off, I wanted to see what you guys thought about this. As a idea for moving forward, I've kind of realized that I'm losing a lot of what I originally wanted building with Whip to be. When I originally started the series, I wanted to focus on building up civilizations that are all interconnected and everything here flows together and we create this massive interconnected world. I feel like we're making that mistake that I did a little while or a long while ago, basically a year ago now, where I jumped off into a distant land somewhere and started working there and had a no connection to it going back home. So I'm thinking for now, 
I've had a lot of fun building with this and experimenting with the 1.13 aquatic features and what we have available to us in this world. And we got a lot of the resources in here, but I kind of want to go ahead, take a break from this and start our big, big project in this world of the port city, which is supposed to be resting right along the coast over there on the mainland area. So as we're leaving our underwater area, which is looking pretty freaking awesome, we'll be, able, we'll be sure to come back over there but we have this whole area over here that I feel like I really have a lot left to do. And I feel like even Castle Bleak Rock, yeah, it has a road leading to it, but there's not a whole lot of stuff leading up to that area, if that kind of makes sense to you guys. So I'd love to go ahead and come back over into this area right here. We have our little roof village right here. So we got to start doing a lot of crazy terraforming projects of basically removing all the trees in this, ooh, hello flying randomly in the sky. Uh, but we got to go ahead and remove a lot of trees in this area. We got to go ahead and do a lot of different things just to get everything here ready. Like take down that iceberg. But I want this to be a big old port city along here. Then that inner sea over there, I want it to be another big old port city. We'll get into this more in the next episode because that's where I want to start actually showing you guys the plan for it. I'm thinking this is a good point to leave the underwater area. If you guys really want to see more of that, be sure to let me know. I'm planning on going back to it eventually. But for now, I kind of would like to focus on that big port city and kind of leave those smaller projects up to like, I don't know, maybe something for it to decide leave vanilla or something like that. But this world here is supposed to be built around doing giant projects of my, oh, there we go. There goes all my rockets. <laughs> but this world is supposed to be more built around kind of bringing everything together, creating this interconnected world all over the place. I feel like we've been losing that. Don't get me wrong. I've been loving what we're doing here. I think it's been super cool. I've had a lot of fun doing it. But anyways, guys, just food for thought. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. Please hit that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, and I will catch you on the flip side.